A one-man army film is one where the protagonist, often a soldier or some sort of ex-military figure, faces insurmountable odds but is able to overcome them with an ungodly amount of violence. Famous examples of this action movie staple include First Blood, the movie that gave the world John Rambo, Die Hard, which made John McClane a household name, and the John Wick series. Hmm, actually, thinking about it, it seems like being called John is also a prerequisite for this genre. But everyone knows those films. So we thought it was about time that some lesser known samples got the spotlight, one where the hero isn't always named John. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie for What Culture, and here are 10 one-man army movies not to be slept on. Number 10, Out of the Furnace. Russell Bays is a nice guy who works in a steel mill and is just trying to get by in life. That is, until he goes to jail for manslaughter after a drink driving accident. Once he gets out, Russell discovers that his brother Rodney has become embroiled in illegal bare knuckle fighting. When Rodney goes missing after refusing to take a dive, it's up to Russell to get him back. This is Out of the Furnace, a 2013 flick directed by Scott Cooper, who would go on to helm the fantastic supernatural horror Antlers. Though it takes a little while to get to the bit where Christian Bale tears through bad guys like they were made of string cheese, once it does, Out out of the Furnace is a mile a minute full of great action set pieces backed up by compelling performances from all involved. The brotherly relationship between Russell and Rodney is a nice touch, and not one usually explored in these sort of films, as both Christian Bale and Casey Affleck are very convincing in their love for each other. Now, if only it had been Ben Affleck this film would have had two Batmans in it. Number 9, The Man From Nowhere In 2010, the biggest film in all of South Korea was a bloody action thriller starring famously selective actor Won Bin. The Man From Nowhere places Won into the shoes of a pawn shop owner who finds himself in deep trouble. When a friend of his pawns a large amount of opium for safekeeping in his shop, the drug dealers come after her and kidnap her young daughter. With his only friend's family in danger, it's up to Cha to kick some backside and get the girl back. The movie drew many positive comparisons to Lay on the Professional and was praised for its well-executed bloody fight scenes and strong character dynamics, performed very strongly at the Korean Film Awards and is well worth a watch for those who like their one-man army pictures. Number 8, Hardcore Henry It might sound like the name of a series of adult films, but Hardcore Henry is actually a fascinating experiment in the action movie genre. The titular Henry is a man who wakes up on an airship in the film's opening scene, where he is fitted with robotic limbs after an accident. What follows is a high-octane chase as a group of soldiers led by a man with telekinetic powers try to track Henry down and take the technology now stored in his body. The viewer is right alongside the protagonist for this journey, as Hardcore Henry is filmed entirely in first person. The director, who would go on to have more success in the action genre with 2021's Nobody, took on the insane task of bringing a first-person shooter video game experience to the big screen. And whilst it's far from perfect, this is still a fascinating insight into what the future of cinema could look like. Just be patient, it takes a while to get used to. Number 7, Ong Bak, Muay Thai Warrior You know that episode of The Simpsons where Bart steals the head of the Jebediah Springfield statue? Well, this is that, but with way more punching. After the head of a sacred idol goes missing from his village, martial artist Ting resolves to get it back. At a time when waifu was still commonplace in martial arts cinema, Ong Bak opted for a more realistic approach in its action scenes, as Tony Jaa performed most of the fight himself at breakneck pace. The star was hailed by many critics as the next big name in action cinema, being heralded as a successor to Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan. Audiences loved watching Ting cut down enemies like they were nothing, so much that the movie got two follow-ups. If you're looking for particularly strong characters or an innovative story, you won't find it here, but Ong Bak is absolutely perfect for those who like their fists flying, their battles epic, and their heroes highly believable. Number 6, The Night Comes For Us When you think of Indonesian martial arts movies, your first thought will undoubtedly be Gareth Evans' The Raid, or its sequel. But don't let this fine example of the genre from 2018 pass you by. The Night Comes For Us was originally a graphic novel before getting the big screen treatment. It's the tale of a former triad member tasked with rescuing a young girl from the clutches of his old employers. The film is a masterpiece of highly choreographed bloody violence, 
and the character takes no prisoners when it comes to keeping his charge safe. Though definitely too gory for some, The Night Comes for Us is a fantastic choice for anyone who prefers the more extreme end of action cinema. Number 5. Upgrade The twist in this one-man army story is that the man in question has very little say in the destruction he causes. In the not-too-distant future, Grey Trace is left paralysed after gunmen attack his car and murder his wife. After sinking into a deep depression, Trace agrees to have a revolutionary computer chip implanted in his body. He regains the ability to walk, but at a price. This is Upgrade, a 2018 Australian-American sci-fi action film from Lee Wannell, the man behind Saw, Insidious and the 2020 Invisible Man. The premise is that Stem, the chip inside Grey, persuades its host to enact bloody revenge on his wife's killers, which he is able to do through his technologically augmented body. Basically, Grey is a robo-ninja now, and it's cool as hell. Instead of simply relying on its great concept, which lesser movies may have done, Upgrade has a genuinely compelling narrative full of twists and turns, as well as beautiful fight scenes right out of a classic action romp. If you're after something a little different, then this is the Upgrade for you. Number 4. Lone Wolf and Cub – Sword of Vengeance Shambara, or Samurai Cinema, is a subgenre of Japanese action movies centred around swordplay. It is most easily comparable to western cowboy or pirate movies, and a top-class example of it can be found in 1972's Lone Wolf and Cub Sword of Vengeance. Adapted from a popular manga series, Sword of Vengeance is about Ogami Ito, a wandering mercenary in Edo-era Japan. Ito has more than just his trusty sword with him, as he also pushes along his three-year-old son in a stroller. So much for work-life balance. Over the course of Sword of Vengeance, the father and son duo encounter all sorts of strange characters as they try to make a living. The movie gets into a lot of detail about samurai and ronin culture, whilst also adding the parental side plot to keep Ito from going completely off the rails, most of the time, for this is a very bloody film. Darren Aronofsky tried and failed to secure the rights to an English language adaptation in the 2000s, so it remains to be seen if the Ogamis will ever make their Western debut. Number 3. Atomic Blonde Just because the genre is commonly referred to as one man army doesn't mean the gals can't get in on the fun as well. Charlize Theron heads up an all star cast in Atomic Blonde, a 2017 spy action thriller director directed by David Leitch. Inspired by the 2012 graphic novel The Coldest City, Theron stars in the film as an MI6 agent tasked with recovering a stolen list of double agents against the backdrop of the fall of the Berlin Wall. With a stunning Cold War era setting and tension hardwired into its plot, Atomic Blonde is a blast to watch, especially when Theron's character is annihilating characters like a woman possessed. Many critics and viewers called the character the female John Wick, which is funny as Leitch was actually an uncredited co-director on that franchise's first film. The character doesn't get nearly as much credit as a kick-ass female action star, and Atomic Blonde has way more to offer than just elaborate kicking sequences or shed loads of gunfire. It has those too, so please don't panic. Number 2. Walking Tall Modern cinema goers might be more familiar with the 2004 movie Walking Tall, in which Dwayne Johnson plays a soldier-turned-sheriff hell-bent on restoring order to a small town. Whilst that movie is pretty good, one of The Rock's better early offerings, this entry is about the original. Original. Released in 1973, this incarnation of Walking Tall is more open about its source material, serving as a biopic to real-life one-man army Buford Passer. Passer was a former wrestler who turned his attention to cleaning up crime in McNary County, Tennessee. Passer takes on all comers, from pimps to moonshine runners to dangerous killers. He never gives up though, even when it costs him dearly, which some would call brave, whilst others would no doubt prefer the term stupid. What makes Walking Tall so good is its main character's dogged determination to do the right thing. He is so bent on achieving justice at any cost without ever seeming corny or inauthentic, possibly because he brutalises a lot of people on his quest for peace. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Number 1. Sisu Taking its title from a Finnish concept meaning stoicism, 2022 Sisu pits ex-commando and gold hunter Atami Korpi against that most classic of movie villains, the Nazis. Korpi strikes it big when he discovers a large gold reserve, only to find himself caught in the middle of the Nazis' scorched earth retreat from Europe. With his livelihood and his trusty horse and dog at stake, Korpi must withstand the war machine and put his own Sisu to the test. This is not a film for the faint of heart, as it takes absolutely no prisoners when it comes to blood and guts. Korpi is ruthless in dealing with the Nazis, which is kind of fair enough, let's be honest, and you get the idea that the director is intentionally pushing the boundaries of what is acceptable to show 
in an action movie. With a strong central performance, an intriguing historical setting, and enough blood to turn the entirety of Lapland red, Sisu is a one-man army class through and through. Also, it has a cute dog in it, which is always a nice bonus.